Remember to take the time to see all the quilt, the whole quilt of faces. Hello. All right, hi. Oops. Hmm. Oops. Huh. Are you well, having a problem, Michelle? Yeah. It says Adobe Flash Player. I'm going to try to get out of this. Maybe I. Nope. There you are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, four pages. Okay. Well, I guess I hope we're all ready for a happy Mother's Day sitting and talk. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy uh, Mother's Day. Yeah. All those of, we appreciate all the, um, our mothers and mothers uh, that have been mothering to us as well as our biological mothers. I think it's really important to acknowledge that. As we go through the sitting, we'll start. I just want to explain that. Um, the word matter, if you think of the word matter as mother, I think it's very important to, or the word mer for ocean, and the French word mer is mother. The, um, but the physicalness, the, our bodies were born from our mother's body, and we'll start uh, with the practice, our sitting practice there. So let your attention connect with your body as mother to you. That relationship with your body as that which holds you and takes care of you. So we begin to see if also the mind and the attention are the quality of the attention we're cultivating has this feminine quality of care and tenderness, kindness. And just check to see, it could be uh, very quiet. It doesn't have to be intense, a very quiet shift from maybe it can be more of a cool or cold observation of our bodies, sounds. It is, it's just a very a tweaking it to seeing if we have a relationship with our body and sounds right now, but also of thoughts, emotions, of care or tenderness. And if you can't quite tune into that, you can always bring in someone or some being that's easy for you to care about or to feel kind towards. 
So it, this could be a bird or the sky, a cat, dog. But it's, it's really just finding that ease of connection with some being. You can bring the image of this being up or place, cloud, tree, elder, child. Or just the felt sense. And if you begin this way, you just kind of go back and forth between the felt sense of yourself or the image of yourself. Receiving your posture, sitting here, and then just go back and forth a few times between this very easy being to find your heart of kindness with. And any time during the sitting, you can do that. You just kind of bring the felt sense or image and see if you can receive this kindness, care, tenderness within. And you're not trying to work hard at conjuring up a feeling, it's more just that quiet connection. And as you tune into your posture, it's again getting that sense of your whole body your bones, muscles, organs. The container for your heart, mind. This mother, grandmother. And for today, we'll just start to tune into the elements as this mothering that we can receive, the earth. We care so much about the earth, but do we care about the earth inside ourselves? So this range anywhere in your body Or you might notice softness or hardness, certainly where our hands touch each other or are on our thighs, just feeling the heaviness or hardness where our buttocks touch our bench or cushion or chair. the support of our earth inside us. That which held our mother that holds all of us And you can notice these sensations come and go by themselves. 
the earth element isn't solid as our earth is always changing. And the air Maybe we notice our breath at our belly coming and going. And as you can notice the waves at the seashore and to see if we can receive this wave of life that touches the earth element. as we receive a rising movement, a falling movement, this aliveness of being mothered by earth and air. You can see how delicate the breath is and the tenderness that you can bring to feel the gratitude for this life coming and going, the expansion, the contraction, the disappearing. And the fire or the coolness, the fire element, warm and cool, this play of temperature, cold, hot, the warmth of our body. is what distinguishes its aliveness. Anywhere in your body, you can notice warmth, coolness. The gift of earth, air, and fire. with air, we might notice movement or tightness or light vibration, tingling. Sometimes we just notice a very light pressure where our skin envelops this wondrous body. The water is often noticeable by, we notice a kind of streaming sometimes or a feeling of stuckness. It's often is invisibly holding us all together.
this gift of sound, vibration, texture, hearing. The silence, sounds, textures. We notice them as best we can without the thinking about what's causing them as much. Bird, car, wind. It's like foot, hand. We notice the thoughts about what's appearing, then see if we can bring the attention back to the direct experience without the description. And notice the change. The word breath cannot ever describe the experience or the word bird or even the word thought or fear, happiness. We shift into this great receptive attention, receiving each moment as a gift of life, moment to moment, birth and death. with as much tender it's a tender quiet abiding in life revealing itself moment by moment as best we can
May we all be at ease. Can you hear me okay? Good. On, on this day of honoring mothers and mothering, I thought, it, I thought that it would be helpful to speak a bit about ways of self-mothering through the prism of practice. So first, let's take a look about mothering or self-mothering through our mindfulness practice. How the primary anchors of mindfulness can be a source of, of self-love and care, joy, equanimity, But in the mindfulness practice, we have uh, as a basis for our mindfulness, the body, as Michelle just led us in the meditation, uh, in the very abiding of the elements of our body, we may find the, the mothering of warmth, sensations of warmth and of vibrations of energy channels running through the body, the various textures of the physical body. So I might ask myself, where, <clears throat> where in the body right now can I find, was it safe? And can I find that sense of self-care? Can I find connection that I find uh, that warm um, quality of abiding in that connection and that care. <clears throat> so I, I might scan the body to see, well, is it around the solar plexus, heart area, hands, feet, the whole body, energy field, this, seek out <clears throat> and then and rest in that place that connects or those places or that motion. Say if we use a mindfulness, uh, careful wash from the head through the whole body down to the feet and toes. Is that soothing movement of mindful awareness, does that create the, the mothering we need you know, at this moment. And then we might look at the second anchor of mindfulness, the four anchors being the body, feelings, consciousness, and phenomena. Um, phenomena in particular being the sense, six senses. So from body, um, maybe it's a feeling tone abiding in the awareness of a pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral feeling tone, because that's what's up. And sometimes we feel mothered when we connect with what's real, what's happening in this moment. And even if it's unpleasant, if we're, abide, if we're abiding in the knowing of this unpleasantness, physical unpleasantness, 
emotional unpleasantness and sounds, sights, and so forth. It often can be mothering or soothing because it's real, it's true. And we, when we abide connected to what's the reality of the moment, what's true, what's actually happening, there is a sort of self-soothing mechanism that's immediately relaxing to the system, immediately feels like self-care is enabled because we're connecting. It doesn't matter that it's unpleasant. Uh, we can probably get away temporarily through some distraction or another, and sometimes that's the best recourse that we might take. It doesn't hurt maybe to first try and just be with the discomfort. Because as we've learned, there's a huge um, gulf between unpleasant and the reaction to unpleasant, which is aversion or ill will. The reaction is extra, it's a learned habit. Unpleasant just comes with our, the package of our body, comes with life. And likewise, it's a huge gulf between pleasant and attachment to the pleasant, clinging to the pleasant, grasping for more pleasant. That's unnecessary, it's extra, it's a learned habit. When we're just abiding, feeling and knowing pleasant, it's just moments of pleasantness that we're with and that's very mothering. Of course, pleasant sensations feel better in our opinion than unpleasant. But if we're really attuned in, in their momentary nature, we also see the impermanence of pleasant. So they're no more dependable than the unpleasant. It's momentarily a pleasant sensation or thought or emotion, uh, and then conditions change. And so does that moment of pleasant sensation or pleasant thought form as an emotional formation. When we're with what is real and what, was, what is true, that itself is a reflection back that it's okay. It's okay when our consciousness is in connection with what is real, what is true in the moment. What we, we can depend on the truth, even if its underlying nature is impermanence forever changing. That knowledge, that truth, that awareness is itself immediately a, a self-mothering, self-care condition in our systems. So being with the body, being with feeling tone, being with consciousness, being with whatever quality or state of the mind in the moment, that can indeed be mothering, it's to know the various mental states or thought formations that have arisen, perhaps more subtly to, to know the knowing process itself is reassuring. The, the recognition of this miracul miraculous phenomena of the knowing mind of consciousness itself, the preciousness of it, the rarity of it, a moment of awareness, powerful, beautiful, and to turn awareness back on itself, appreciate it, is a form, deep form of self-mothering, self-care. And all the um, many facets of consciousness, all the ways in which we see that consciousness can be influenced by awareness. And, and when there's a difficult mind state there, <clears throat> again, like with the bodily sensation, our feeling tone, when we're actually aware of it, it doesn't matter whether it's pleasant or unpleasant. It's just the truth, it's the truth of the moment. And always we can be aware of the awareness that's connecting with the mind state, whether the mind state 
is a happy one or an unhappy one, whether it's aggressive or calm and peaceful, whether it's expansive and boundless, like the Brahma Viharas, or whether it's constricted and compressing. That kind of inquiry itself is a kind of form of mothering, what's actually happening right now in my stream of consciousness and mental states. So learning how the body can be nurturing and the feeling tones can be nurturing, pleasant, unpleasant, or the neutral feeling tones that neither have a, an allure, uh, nor an intimidation tone to it, just even, abiding, knowing that evenness. And then consciousness, quality of mind, mental formations. And lastly, the uh, phenomena that arises moment to moment. Particularly, we learn that sixth sense door attunement, abiding, knowing, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touch sensation throughout the body, and thinking awareness itself. So if we're, if we're really abiding, resting at any one or multiple sense doors, it, it's a form of nourishment. Consciousness is considered a, a nutrient of our being by its very nature, its very innate nature. So to be aware that seeing is a visual consciousness and hearing is auditory consciousness, and then sensing consciousness, thinking consciousness. That awareness, <clears throat> when we're resting, abiding, knowing these six kinds of consciousnesses, that's nurturing. That's adding the nutriment to our system. That's emboldening, embolden, embold, emboldening our heart, strengthening our heart. Just knowing that. So just taking the basic fundamentals of our practice, the four anchors, body, feelings, consciousness, phenomena, like the sixth sense of phenomena. We can also take the four Brahma Viharas and turn, turn them on ourselves <clears throat> for self-loving, self-caring, uh, joy in our own being <clears throat> and equanimity of our being. So for metta, for example, to, to feel in the text, uh, the definition of metta also describes or defines it as a solar radiation from the heart. So to, to abide feeling, calling up metta and knowing this metta, resting in this metta around or within the solar plexus, our heart center, and feeling its radiation, feeling the radiation of warmth, the radiation of light, and a, its soothing nature that it moves through the body, conjoins with, as Michelle was guiding us, feeling the elements of warmth and feeling the elements of texture, vibration, pressure, movement, and so forth. And here in the metta, Kind of conjoins with the reality, the, the visceral, elemental reality of the body. And the self-soothing is, is right there as the metta kind of moves through, radiates, illumines these elemental natures of the body. Soft rain is a term Sayada Upandita would use when we would were training in the intensive Brahma Vihara practice. He would, he would define metta as, as this soft rain. And when I imagine rain, how the cohesive nature of the moisture 
and how it seems to connect all the elements, air element, earth element, water element, the heat, fire element, brings it all together. I, I get the sense of understanding, that rain of understanding, the, the soft rain of metta is when all things sort of come together in a moment and we feel that connectedness, the body with everything else, and we're inside, outside, it disappears. And that, that quality of metta that is connection, that is about feeling oneness with our surround, the elements of the earth and with others, other living beings, breathing the same air, that sort of elemental oneness, also a psychic and emotional oneness that comes about. That's the soft brain of metta and how it can be um, powerfully mothering through the moisture of metta connection, metta warmth, the unconditionality of metta, meaning that there's no part of ourself that needs to be different than what it is right now. We don't need to change, even though we may have the intention and wish to wake up and be a better person every day. In a moment of practicing metta by its very nature of being boundless and unconditional, it's metta just as we are. Metta for our mental, emotional, and physical nature here and now just as it is in this moment. That's what true unconditional self-mothering or metta is. Acceptance of just where we are, not where we wanna be. So just recollecting, thinking of metta as, as cohesion and um, uh, the healing of all the split parts of ourselves, what we leave out or what we ignore, what we suppress. And with the compassion, how, how do we self-mother with compassion, care? When we practice it and understand that true compassion is, is care and wisdom together so that compassion doesn't pick and choose. It doesn't pick and choose what of our sufferings it's willing to be with and what it tries to ignore or throw out or in terms of suffering anywhere um, in, our, in our experience, what we choose to be with, what difficulty, what pain is okay and, and what we can't handle, what we ignore. In a moment of true karuna, caring, compassion, it's unconditional, like the metta. And we're, we're not picking and choosing. We're, we're not discerning whether it's a worthy thing to be present for. Compassionate presence is a, is a, a kind of internal stability with the conditions and the conditions of any kind of dukkha, any kind of distress, any kind of unreliability, any kind of suffering or pain uh, is the powerful presence of compassionate care that doesn't step back from fear. It's not afraid to be face to face with the suffering. And in terms of self-mothering, um, our own, our own suffering in particular, is that willingness and courage, energetic, courageous um, presence to feel and be with that difficulty, with the caring vibration, that mental component of compassion, the aspect of Brahma Vihara that attunes to any kind of off kilterness one of the definitions of dukkha feeling our being off kilter. So just even the slightest sort of deeply organic existential sense of something being awry or something being off, 
You don't need to dig and find a psychological definition or solution. Just need to feel that presence moving through our system, through the body, into the heart, into our depths, and the attunement to that off kilterness, to that vulnerability, to that pain and caring. Feeling the energy of the caring compassion. It's okay. I feel this pain. It's okay. May I care for this pain. May I allow, accept the presence of this pain. And may compassion be the container that holds it. Compassionate awareness, compassionate consciousness, and feel it through the body, through the heart. When I was young, my mother often had um, difficulty in my teenage years when I would get in trouble. She wasn't able to hold that space. And so that would be a kind of a extra challenge to get through that difficult, troubled time I was going through. It was my dad who was more mothering in some of those teenage troubled years, which was a surprise because I, I didn't feel him as much when I was younger. He didn't, his own father had left him. So he didn't know how to be as present as he was later on when I was, got older. So in the ways where my mom, my mother couldn't hold those troubled, some of those troubled teenage years, my dad could. And I'm so grateful, you know, to recollect how that mothering energy from his from that you know, masculine primal figure in my life, uh, it, taught, it taught me a lot. It teaches me who I am, you know, to this day. Those where mothering can come from and how it can be and what the conditions are for it to happen. Mudita as mothering. That's an easy one, we might think. Uh, especially if we have been practicing mudita and know the difference between attached joy and the non-sensual, non-attached joy that arises from within and doesn't depend on anything, doesn't depend on pleasant experience, pleasant sights, sounds, sensations, or emotions and thoughts. It's just joy for joy's sake, what we call a dharma joy, inner pure joy. So we, we practice it just for that, so we can grow from it, nurture from it. Our, our practice is largely nurtured by pleasant dhamma, dhamma pleasures, various subtle joys and happinesses as they evolve from our practice. Uh, so we start right here with, when we call up the mudita and abide knowing, feeling, experiencing this inner appreciation, this inner beauty and joy toward goodness, our own goodness when we're self-mothering, or sometimes it's helpful first to connect with the goodness of someone we feel safe with and trust enough first, and then turn it toward ourselves. And then just all the ways that we can muster that joy. I was imagining this morning, you know, there's over my life of, of surfing from a young age, seven years old, I, there's, there's waves I remember, particular waves I can remember surfing, taking off on, or being in the green room, as they say. That's when the wave breaks over you, completely breaks over your body, and you're on your board, and you're in that sort of tubular part of the wave as it's breaking completely over your body, uh, and that's the green room, and the, the sound of it, the smell of it the freshness of it, the visual, individual spraying drops and so forth coming out of it. You know? I also remember some ways 
that crushed me against the reef at the bottom. So that's not the that's not the image I choose when I'm trying to call up the mudita and self mother. I try to remember those ways I made and that it brought me so much joy. And you come out yelling and feeling good for two weeks. You know, our, a forest you've been to, bamboo forests you know, grow from the north to the south end of, of this island. And I have spent um, large parts of my earlier life hiking through and being in and playing in the bamboo, various bamboo forests and guava tree forests, the paper bark tree forests in the Ko'olau Mountains here. I remember vivid particular moments like this. We all do. So we can hold on to that like a meditation visualization. And that can be a source for lifting that joy up. I mean, a rise in the heart, in the chest, in the solar plexus, and abiding there and feeling the mothering energy the soothing energy that comes from this, this joy applied at this time and the, the, the sensation of this murita, appreciation, joyous consciousness, nurturing us in a mothering way. And all of these very pleasant Brahma Viharas, metta and karuna, caring, compassion, uh, the appreciative joy of mudita, uh, combined with the last of the Brahma Viharas, the equanimity, are, are mutually strengthened and then kind of brought together uh, in that one heart one mind nature that they are. When we, when we experience the inseparability of metta and compassion, joy and equanimity, that they are one and, and they're one held together by the, the cohesion of the, of the metta and the wisdom and depth and grounding of the equanimity that keeps them from sliding into their near and far enemies things that look like metta but aren't are there with attachment are uh, attached joy and and compassion with an agenda and so forth or their opposites the envy and jealousy of joy and the cruelty and manipulation of compassion the opposites the ill will and aversion anger the opposite of metta and with the equanimity, uh, the opposite being the reactive mind, the, the mothering quality of equanimity itself arising out of the non-reactive, that it's the imperturbable, imperturbability of the equanimous heart in presence of whatever. It's not moved by attachment, it's not intimidated by aversion, just remaining solidly in the present. And it's, and it's a world apart from its masquerade of indifference, this dissociation, disconnect. So here we have all our self-mothering avenues through the mindfulness practice, our own bodies being mothering, feeling tones, how they can be mothering just by feeling, feeling, feeling our feelings is healing. And through the awareness of awareness, consciousness of itself, consciousness turned in and of itself, the appreciation of the subtlety, that most subtle aspect of our natures. It's self mothering, nurturing, just to abide in that, in this, that knowing. And um, body, feeling, consciousness, and then just the sixth sense to our awareness, learning how to abide in a restful way 
at any of our sense doors. Like the beauty of abiding in the awareness of seeing without getting lost in the object of what seeing. Hearing, uh, being pulled away by the sound object that we imagine to be out there and so forth through all the senses, awareness of sensing to the other senses rather than being pulled by the object of the consciousness of the other senses. And then the Brahma Viharas, the, the mothering of metta, self-mothering of unconditional love for ourselves as we are, care for our pain, joy for our goodness and happiness beauty and equanimity that's at rest, at peace with things as they are. Happy Mother's Day to all of us. I wonder if you might have a couple of questions for us. Do we want to do the chant or the question? I didn't hear you, Michelle. Oh, we were going to do the chant. Oh, right. Okay. Right. You can do okay. that. And then we'll take a few questions. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Mother's Day chant. Uh, Jesse, can you put it up? Yeah, which one, which one did you want? Aham, awero, homie, up, up. Yeah, that's one. Uh, so we'll. We won't do call and response. Well, a lot of people here know it, but I'll go a little slow. So um, <clears throat> I've been chanting this every morning and I, I just go a little slower so I can actually um, do it while I'm doing it. So if you go too fast, you actually can't actually kind of take it in. And, and as you go through the beings, I, I think what I'm always touched with by this chant is just how much, um, how inclusive, the Buddha is with all the different beings, uh, that sense of um, it's not just about those we are familiar with or um, like, it's, it's, it's like all beings everywhere. So that, that amazing, as the chant goes on, there's a kind of more and more rejoicing in this um, inclusivity. And so I, I also like this chant because when you get to, um, we include earth, air, fire, and water, all the beings in the earth, air, fire, and water, it kind of goes with this theme of um, Mother's Day, you know, for um, all of us. <clears throat> Aham, awero, homi, apya, pajo, homi, anigo, homi, sukiyatanam, pari, harami. Sabe sata, sabe pana, sabe puta, sabe pugala, sabe atabawa paria pana. Saba itio Sabe purisa Sabe aria 
Sabe Anaria. Sabe Dewa. Sabe Manusa. Sabe Winipatika. Ah, where a hantu? Apiapacha hantu. Aniga hantu. Suki atanam pariharantu. Dukkha muchantu. Yata lada sampatito. Mawiga chantu. Kamasaka. Purati maya desire. Pachi maya desire. Uttaraya desire. Dakinaya desire. Purati maya anu desire. Pachi maya anu desire. Uttaraya anu desire. Dakinaya anu desire. Heti maya desire. Upari maya desire. Udamya wa bawaga cha. Adoya wa awichito. Samanta chakawa lesu. Ye sata patawi chara. Abya bajani weracha. Ni dukka cha nu padawa. Udamya wa bawaga cha. Adoya wa awichito. Samanta Chakawa Lesu Yesata Udakechara Abhyabhaja Niweracha Nidukkacha Nupadawa Udamyawa Bhavagacha Adoya wa awichito. Samanta chakawa lesu. Yesata akase chara. Abhyapaja ni weracha. Nidukka cha nupadawa. Udamya wa bhavaga cha. Adoya wa awichito. Samanta chakawa lesu. Yesata agamichara. Abhyabhaja ni weracha. Ni dukkha cha nupadua. Ada imaya patipadaya jaramara namha parimuchi sami. Idam me punyam asawakayawaham hutu. Idam me silam. Magapala nyana sa pachayo ho tu. Imam no punyam 
Bhagam Sabha Satanam Dema. Sabe Sata Sukita Hantu. Sadu, Sadu, Sadu. So if folks have any questions, um, you can, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should have a little reactions button here. That is a way to just what's called raise your hand so we can see if you have a question. If it doesn't work there, you can always just type into the chat letting us know you have a question and we'll, we'll call upon you. Uh, I think Audrey, are you there? You're the first latest. Hold on, and actually I'm gonna change the... And I think you can, um, Audrey, you can unmute yourself there. Yeah. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the teachings, so beautiful. Um, my, I've been, um, I went to the meditation retreat that you all just did and then I've been listening to the talks and doing the meditations and um, I'm and then tonight so beautiful and I'm <clears throat> it raises the question for me of just really wanting to hear you talk about um, thinking <laughs> um, I've been trying to treat thinking as any other um, faculty that's needed at times that I'm aware I'm thinking um, but I just would like to hear you hear you talk about that if you would thank you Michelle you want to start no no voice I can't hear you're muted okay oh yeah no unless you want me to but I can start which which one start okay well um You've already said this, but I'm going to agree with you that um, it's helpful to remember that the ear hears and the eye see, the nose smells, the mouth tastes, the body uh, touch, the touch sensations, and the mind thinks. And so this, I think this basic acceptance that the human mind thinks is essential to um, our relationship to hearing because uh, we tend to have the most difficulty with the sense door. Somehow we think we should be able to get rid of it or control it. And um, it's also very difficult to investigate it. It's because it's so insubstantial and it's so fast, it's um, moving so fast. Uh, so and I think that's the bottom line is to remember that um, the human mind thinks. And so that, that even if you look at um, like I point to the ear, I point to the eyes, the mind or chitta consciousness, the, this is where the, the thought is touching this place as it appears and disappears. It's not happening in the brain so um, initially. So it's again to remember that it's hard enough to be mindful of the direct experience of a sound or the direct experience of a sight, a direct experience of a thought. Uh, it's just this is this is what the mind does. Uh, so that I think that that's where you know. Other, other than that, I think that with all the sense doors, the mindfulness when we apply the mindfulness to a sound or a thought or, or an emotion of happiness or fear, uh, the idea is that we're not getting rid of anything or getting anything. We're discerning it, and so we're discerning. We're discerning thought. 
So rather than thinking of it as an enemy or a problem, we're, t we're able to start to um, listen to most of it as like general chatter that's keeping us company. So if you see that most thinking is just general chatter that we're, we're just talking to ourselves, but not out loud. And then that some thoughts are really important and helpful and often clues to our like our whole um, world of sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thinking, emotion. I think then you, you don't get so caught in the story. The story you don't have to think of as a problem either. It's a clue. They're like clues to, to what's really kind of happening on a, a deeper level. So kindness, compassion, mindfulness. Thank you. Yeah. Steve, do you have anything else? Uh, I often find it helpful to go back and forth between awareness of thinking and awareness of hearing. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, sound vibrations, body sensations, fragrances, and flavor are, are, are far more immediately available to mindfulness. Thoughts and visual experience are, are more uh, fragile in that sense, in that so quickly we're identified and attached to our thoughts and to visual experience that thoughts seem to precede awareness of them. That we, we, we're thinking about the thoughts or we're thinking about our visual experience uh, before awareness can get in there to just know thinking is happening or to know seeing is happening. But not so much with sound vibration, the attunement to sound vibration. So when I go to sound vibration and then go back, the thinking, it's more like listening when I'm with the thoughts or with the visual experience. Just check it out and see if that's not true. Thank you. Gita? Thank you. Uh, we can't. Oh, you have to. You have to unmute. She she is unmuted. Um, hmm. I don't know. For some reason, your speaker may not be on. Or her microphone. Microphone. Um, can you hear? I can it? try to walk you through a sec. Oh. It almost sounded like we could hear you for a second. Oh, is she frozen now? Yeah. Mm. Let me just try. One moment, frozen. It's so interesting, huh? I just how this all works. If you, if you can hear, you might have to log out and log back in and just see if your connection stabilizes. It is. Okay. okay. Hopefully, she'll get it. Of course, if anyone has a question in the meantime, you're welcome to raise your hand. So it's kind of fun these these spaces where you're we're just being together and quiet. It's really nice. Like I like it. Uh, while we're being quiet, yeah, I, I just, I forgot to read this from the Metta Sutta. Just as a mother would protect her own child, 
her only child with her life, one should cultivate such a state of mind toward all beings without limit and toward all the universe, one should cultivate a state of mind of goodwill without limit, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, purified from enmity and hatred. It looks like maybe Stephen Riley had a question here. Thanks, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes, can There's you hear Gita. you? There's Gita. There's Gita. Just hold on, uh, Gita, we, someone else is asking a question just in, in a minute, so we'll come to you right after. Or not, Stephen, are you there? Uh oh, <laughs> the curse of the question room happening today. Huh, is it a coincidence? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, all right, well, let's go to Gita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I just, I am so grateful. I just, I wanted to really thank you all and the Sangha from the bottom of my heart. Um, some of you know, I've been in India for the last few weeks and just got back. And I've been following you um, online, offline rather, um, in India. And I cannot tell you how huge it was to feel your support. Um, all of you while I was in India. And um, it's an extraordinary time in India. And the teachings really just, there's never been a time in my life when it has just shown up in such an extraordinary way um, to really be with something that is unfathomable and um, the suffering is so intense and the heart is so boundless in responding to it. And it's, um, it was such a powerful time to understand sickness and um, dying and death and the fear and the uncertainty of what it means to be human. Uh, we know this, of course, all of us on, a, on an individual level, but to be able to really feel this at a billion people level, and then to really see moment to moment that Dharma is no different, that it really is the same, whether I'm thinking of my father's individual health or whether I'm thinking about the country or the world, um, it's just, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, it's just boundless gratitude for holding me and the country and the world in, um, in your hearts. And, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't be here without you all. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. We don't always know the power of our being together like this, and I think it's helpful to hear. Did Stephen disappear entirely? Stephen Riley, are you there somewhere? <laughs> Lost in the quilt? Yeah. Or, or in the cosmos? Maybe he did what Gita's did and we'll be back. Okay, I don't see him. Okay. He just logged on.
Stephen, are you back with us? Anyone else with a question at the tip of their tongue and from their heart? As we see out Mother's Day 2021. Oh, well, our hearts are full of affectionate awareness. Good to be with you all, I think. We're pow, huh? Pow already. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Good to be with you. Mahalo. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>